welcome everyone to the Navigating My Early Career Talk. We've got some exciting panelists here today that are going to talk about all of their early careers, what they're currently doing, and tips and tricks to be able to, well, help you navigate and move forward in your own careers. So without much further ado, I'd love to introduce our panelists, but I'm going to let them do that themselves by asking you to tell me who are you, what are you currently known for, and what do you want to be known for? Tifu, I'll start with you. Damn, why do I have to be the first one? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tifu. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Bloomberg. And what I would like, what I'm known for, is being the funny guy. Well, I would think so. And what I would like to be known for is being someone thought-provoking. All right. Um, my name is Kadesh Beckford. Um, I work at Samsung Electronics UK. I'm a product manager. I look after the smartphones in the UK. So pretty much every advert, the pricings, costings, um, some of the actual R&D when it comes to our smartphones in the UK, I look after and also help manage it with Europe as well. Um, what I want to be known for, especially within Samsung, is actually being a representative, well, somebody that represents being unapologetically black within a really large organization. Um, and I've been told that um, I'm quite cheeky sometimes. Um, I'm Ebenezer. I work at Activision Blizzard King, um, and I am a technical ad op specialist. What I would like to be known for is a person who's a problem solver and represents uh, black people within the company to show that we can get into the industry too. And my name is Salome Tirado Okeze. I'm studying computer science at the University of Leeds, but I'm doing a degree apprenticeship with PwC. I'd say that it, what I'm known for depends on who you ask. People know me as a TikToker, but I'd like to say that I'm an ambassador for young people that want to do apprenticeships. And I'd like to be known as somebody that helped young people, specifically young black people, find purpose in their careers and find fulfillment. Amazing, very inspiring from all of you. So let's get straight to it, because we only have half an hour with you guys on stage here. And let's kick it off by, why don't you tell me about your career journey so far? And we're actually going to go back down. So, Salumi, can you start? Um, I actually love this question because I realize like, I can only connect the dots now, looking back. So I was definitely someone like the only black girl in my secondary school, the only black girl in my primary. And I loved this because I love to stand out. So when it started was in secondary school when I had to choose computer science as an option and I chose this because I knew I'd be one of the only girls doing it and from then on like I studied it at A level and then that's when I heard about the PwC apprenticeship and again it was something that not many people were doing apprenticeships was something new people were just going to university so I saw it as another opportunity to stand out and really do something different and it's been great so far Amazing. And to follow on from that, that's led to you working at PwC. So tell us more about your journey there. Yeah, so obviously I started as a first year. And what I do like about the apprenticeship is I've been able to move around a lot and work in different areas. Um, I started off by working in business solutions. So that's basically helping businesses who are about to go into crisis or that need a little bit of a change or help managing their business. But now I actually work in cloud, so that's helping clients improve their technology systems. So a lot of companies are still on pen and paper these days, are still using like old technology. So what I've been involved in is helping them come up with solutions and demoing solutions in different ways for them as well. Amazing. Now, Ebenezer, over to you. Tell us about your career journey. Yeah, sure. I would say that I just got into tech about three years ago. Um, before that, I was working in operations and customer service, and I wanted to make a career switch into tech, and I didn't know how to do it. And one thing that struck me was looking out the outside to trying to get into a tech um, job. It looks very daunting, but when you go into it and you look at these internship roles, um, these entry-level positions you could go into, you can find that you can work your way into these type of companies and get into the tech roles that you want to get into. So I took a, a, like a decision that I want to go and get into tech. I looked at an entry um, position role in the company I used to work for. It gave me the credentials for me to end up at King, 
where my career can flourish. Fantastic. Over to you, Kadesh. So I've been at Samsung for 11 years. Um, when I started off, I was actually more into retail sales and I was a marketing specialist as well. So looking at localized marketing within Samsung UK and driving market share. What's ended up actually happening over a small time frame, I moved into B2B from sales and training, but I always had a passion for technology. Um, and with also my experience and my education being electronic servicing and computer technology, what actually happened from there was I eventually moved into product management. So now I literally work as an example, yesterday I had to put through what I want our smartphones to look like for 2025 and 2026. So I look into a lot of the R&D and the technology and moving forward and how it actually appeals to the UK market specifically. Um, and my journey has actually been, it, there were slight challenges being a black man within an organization. I'll be open and honest with everybody here. But you know what? One thing that I learned was just do the basics, do the basics right and let the evidence stand before you in terms of what you do and let the evidence actually speak loud, which now I can say that I'm proud that I'm in a position that I never ever saw that I was gonna be in. So going to this point, um, actually my career path hasn't been smooth sailing, but what I can say um, from here on and going forward, is gonna only gonna get better. Okay, um, so as I said, I'm obviously a software engineer. Similar to Ebenezer, I've been doing this for like three years. So within Bloomberg, I work within their trading solutions. So we are essentially providing a midware uh, product so that all our trading systems can show their data to their clients, essentially. And then obviously, prior to that, I was in another department within Bloomberg called Data as a data analyst specializing in exchange market data. So obviously, um, the transition to move to software for me was quite interesting because whilst I was in data, we had to obviously deal with a lot of data sets and doing that manually via Excel was quite painful. So uh, I tried to learn about different programming languages, so Python, for example, and then my curiosity kind of kept on growing within the tech space itself. So fortunately enough for me, Bloomberg likes to keep a lot of their people once they're in there. So there was an opportunity to actually move from data into an engineering where I was provided like a mentor uh, and a community actually to help me kind of move forward called Black in Tech. So yeah, that's how I've been my transition. Incredible. Thank you all of you for answering that. Now, I think there's something that's quite common between especially the three of you. Um, is, and that is career change that has happened throughout your journey. You know, you didn't stay in the same area, you moved, you transitioned, which is something I think a lot of our audience can resonate with, you know, whether they're doing a degree right now, whether like, actually, I want a career in something else, or alternatively, our postgraduates that are here as well, who are looking at a whole new career change. So I think for them, let's, let's have a chat about career changes in, in your journey so far. And actually, yeah, tell us about the challenges you face during those journeys and how you overcame them. Ebenezer, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, um, when I was at university, I studied, I, I studied media production and um, I didn't go into that kind of career. And when I came out of university, when you come out, it's quite scary. You don't know what to do. You don't know what kind of role to kind of go for because there's nobody directs you in that kind of way. So when I came out of uni, I just got a uh, customer service job. And I felt like my degree wasn't getting used. I felt like it was rotten. And a lot of you will feel like that when you finish uni. Everybody finishes uni and everybody's competing for the same jobs. And you don't know what to do. But my advice in terms of the way, what I did was, after going into these roles that didn't feel like a career, it was like a job, you can pick up skills from these jobs that you can take over. Customer service, I, spoke, I learned how to speak to people on the phone, speak to people in different departments. I took those skills and I took skills from other, other roles as well that put me into the position. So just because you do study something at university, it doesn't mean you, you have to go into that role. You can switch because you can pick up skills from your degree, you can pick up skills from jobs that you may, you may do and take it to another role that you want to do in the future. Amazing. It sounds like you were really identifying and harnessing those transferable skills, right? Very much so. Absolutely. And Tifu, do you have anything you want to add to that? I know you have a similar yeah. journey. So for me, I think um, the challenges I faced was 
first actually making that decision to say I want to change. Because when you obviously see, like I wanted to become a software engineer, you see like the different skill sets and the requirements to become a software engineer. That comes as like quite like a shell shock to you and you feel like, you know, uh, can I actually do this, you know? Like, but like what I found is like once you step forward and like start doing it, it becomes simpler as you go along. Then the second aspect, which I found quite challenging, was the actually the gaining of the skill sets. There's so much to read. There's so much you can like find on the web, which is a good thing and a sense of the bad thing. But you don't know where to start. But like fortunately enough for me, I was able to kind of like find people within the company that can guide me to kind of like know which areas I can focus on to become a, that are key competence to become a software engineer essentially. And then just the last thing is like persistence and consistency because, hey, it's gonna be long. I remember the times I had to like, after work, because I, I, I didn't obviously want to leave my job and like focus on changing my career. I kind of wanted to do it at the same time because, hey, we got bills to pay, right? So, <laughs> you know, I kind of had to like dedicate time outside of work to kind of like focus on that part because that's something people don't f think you need to do, but you have to, and you have to make some sacrifices. So. The fact that I had to like, you know, not go out every, every other week, you know, or not see a friend every time, you know. So it was those kind of sacrifices that, and keeping them, doing them consistently, enough for me to then gain the skill sets and then find people around me to help me to kind of like make that transition that I feel helped solve those problems or lessen those challenges as much as possible. Absolutely. So to paraphrase, it's a lot about persistence, surrounding yourself with the right people and occasionally making sacrifices. Amazing. So we've, we've spoken a lot about transitions into technical roles, but we also want to focus on non-technical roles, right? So Kadesh, can I go to you to talk about your transition? Yeah, so there are multiple roles. So even if we look at Samsung in general, the product is the center of the organization, being, say, a smartphone, a tablet, computer, washing machine, whatever. But in reality, we need to bring these things to life. So there's marketing teams, for example. There's the sales team, the B2B and B2C teams, and how we can actually communicate to our customers. Also, PR in tech. So once we've launched and marketing campaigns and influencer campaigns, so there's other elements and legal that you may look at, or even, for example, my colleague Sharice is here. She works in CX division, right? And they look at customer experiences. So there's customer services and how we can actually fine tune it. And all of these actual areas or branches basically come together to actually launch an actual product. So I'll definitely welcome you, even if you're not necessarily tech-minded, and wanting to know about an application protocol, a RAM in a device, whatever it may be, if you've got skills in marketing or PR, communication, customer services, amongst other things as well, if you're a solicitor, then tech is a really good area to be in. And the great thing, once you're in tech, it's really easy to even branch if you wanna go outside of tech afterwards, because there's an amazing amount of skill sets you can learn um, and then be able to take to other organizations. Amazing. Thank you for that. I think what you covered quite interestingly there is the kind of the importance of non-technical roles within technical organizations. And actually, Salome, I can see you're like raring to go. Do you have anything you want to add to that? No, because I completely agree because I'm quite a creative person and I love technology. So I always wondered whether at somewhere like PwC, I'd be able to combine the two. And I'd love to say that I have been able to because um, even last year I decided to start a YouTube channel and it was literally just for fun and with that um, one of the directors saw it and he was like you're so good in front of the camera can you come with me and help train other people to talk about tech in front of the camera and I was like of course that's what I want to do and also I started posting on social media on TikTok and the social media team at PwC saw that and they invited me to spend the day with the chair to film a day in the life of his of what he does at PwC so it was kind of interesting to see that all the fun things I did as a hobby like making silly TikTok videos making YouTube videos kind of led to a position where I was able to bring that into the professional corporate world so that was really exciting and because of all of that I was also able to present an AI series for Google's DeepMind and the Raspberry Pi Foundation so it really showed how everything kind of linked together. 
absolutely inspiring doing that. And make sure to check out her TikTok if you haven't already. I'm sure we'll talk about how to find it later on. But what I'm interested in, where you just spoke there at PwC, where you were training people, what was the impact that you saw of training people on like how to pitch and how to kind of sell that product on camera? I think it's really important because you could be the most technical person in the room, but if you can't explain to people in a simple way what you've done, they will understand it. For example, my mom only called me yesterday and she told me, have you heard of ChatGBT? I've been seeing the word flying around, but I didn't know what it was until somebody explained it to me. I think that's a key like, lesson in like, you have to understand how to really present your product. So the impact of that training session was people felt more confident in front of a camera to be able to explain what they do in a way that was relatable to an audience. Amazing, and that segues quite nicely into our next question. So you all do very different roles currently in your day jobs, but how would you maybe explain your role to maybe your grandparents, like you were mentioning earlier with your mother? Um, yeah, let's start with you, Salome. Um, to my grandparents, <laughs> I'm gonna steal this from one of my colleagues, but I would say I'm a therapist for other businesses. So businesses that want to improve their systems or they don't know how to proceed in marketing, they don't know how to proceed in technology, they don't know how to take that next step, I help them and I work in teams that help them do that. Absolutely, over to Ebenezer. Um, how I would describe my role is um, when you play um, the lovely games at King, Can You Crush? Um, the, as you see in those games, I'm the, um, the person, the people in my team are the ones that make the ads seamless so it doesn't affect the customer experience. So just making sure that when you do come on our app to play our games, you have a good time. OG Katash. Um, my role is multifaceted. So I look at what we've done in the past, what we're doing right now, and also what looks into the future as well whilst also feeding into different departments within the organization and then pitching and selling in our latest technologies into the world. So for example, BT, Vodafone, um, all of these relevant channels, I would sell in way prior to a device comes into the actual market and just ensure that they take the right stock um, and also see our latest in innovation, whilst also looking at commercial agreements, promotions within our business to ensure that our devices are number one. So uh, when I tried to explain this to myself, I found it quite challenging in itself. So I maybe, maybe take it from a different perspective. So I tried to kind of make it relate to her pension, for example, right? So she has a pension, someone manages that pension for her. So what my company or my team indirectly does is help those people find to use tools to make their decisions so that they can help her pension grow. But then if, if she's like, oh, interesting, I'll be like, okay, this is a great time to bring up my whiteboard and tell her all the different ways of how my team kind of incorporates into that ecosystem that makes that happen. Amazing, thank you for all of that. So we're wrapping up to our last five minutes and what I really want to give our audience is something tangible to take away today, you know, some advice or something they can action after today for their early careers. So I'm going to ask all of you again. So Tifu, we'll start with you. What advice would you give to yourself if you could go back in time and speak to yourself as you started your career? Like what advice would you say? What tip would you give to help accelerate your career further? I would say, don't think your career will be linear. Keep learning. Keep learning, open, open yourself up to different avenues, right? So if you find something that's curious and interesting, focus on that. Try and gain more. You don't need to tie yourself to your uh, current degree or whatever and see where that's gonna take you. I studied economics and politics, and I'm a software engineer now. That is a completely different facet. And last thing, the second thing is like, I like this quote from Denzel Washington, fall forward in the sense of like, whenever you try something new, it's going to be hard, it's gonna be challenging. You might find it difficult, might find it like, I'm not. As you fail, 
you're failing in the right direction. It's not going to be an easy journey, but just keep at it. And my younger self would have definitely learned more from that than saying, hey, you should study this, you should do that. Because I feel like with your career, it will just evolve naturally as your interests move on. And with time and age, certain things interest you more than the others. Amazing. And to kind yeah. of add on to that, it reminds me of a saying of fail fast, fail often, and fail forward. Because it's always that thing if you're going to learn the most from the mistakes that you make, and that's going to help you go forward. So amazing advice there. Kadesh, can we go to you? So my advice would be, in your 20s, use your energy that you have to actually, you know what, work as hard and learn and gather as much information as possible. And then slowly from there, make sure you find a mentor so you can minimize mistakes and also maximize on opportunities. Lastly, after that, I would say work multiple disciplines within an organization so you can actually fine tune to know exactly where you want to be and what you want to do. Because you've used your energy to actually, if you think about it logically, right? I'm going to sit forward for this, right? Is that you've, you've understand a business specifically. You understand the business in whole entirety and the value which you can add. But then because you've worked multiple disciplines, you know yourself what's the right path for you and then go and kill it and become the best version of yourself. Do remember there's a saying that goes, a jack of all trades is a master of none. What happens is people also forget the ending of it. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but often better than a master of one. So it actually enables you to become the best version of yourself within any organization. And then lastly, I would also say, um, when it comes to being black in tech, stand up and be who you are unapologetically. Right? Understand your working environment and obviously be professional, but be yourself. And I promise you, you'll actually become the best version of yourself and the organizations will respect you for it. So if you want to go to work with an Afro, obviously make sure you get your Afro pick, but go there and be happy and be proud. But make sure your work delivers and do the basics well whilst you're in that organization. Yeah, it really resonates of being your unap unapologetic, authentic self going into your career. Amazing. Ebenezer, over to you. Um, if I was to give myself advice, I was a stubborn person when I was young. Um, I would say failure is not something that holds you back. Um, you can learn. It's never too late to change. Just because you don't find yourself in your 20s, it doesn't mean you can't find yourself in your 30s. And you can change career progression. So when something goes wrong, it's not, it's not the end of the world. You can always change, and the fact, when you go into these big companies, being black is not, is, not, is not something that holds you back. It's something that can push you forward. If you're the only black person in your team, so what? You can be the first of many. And Salome, last but not least. Um, one thing I would say is that rejection is redirection because um, I was someone, I was rejected from every single uni option except for the apprenticeship one. And now I can really look back and see like that's where I was meant to end up. I'd say it's important to be authentic, to find out who you are, who your value, what your values are and what your purpose is. So no matter what situation you're placed in, you can always bring yourself to that situation because no two situations will be the same. For example, I've never sat on a panel on Black Tech Best, but I know that I can just show up as who I am, bring who I am, and that will always be enough. Rejection is redirection. I love that, absolutely taking that forward. Now, with our last 30 seconds, I just want to go down the row. If anybody here wants to connect with you today and find out more about what you do and get some advice, where can they find you? Salome, let's start with you. Yeah, on LinkedIn, my name is Salome Tirado Okeze. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Ebenezer Owusu, or you can find me at the King Stand over there. My name is Kadesh Beckford. Find me obviously on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much. And I'll be floating around. So if you've got any questions, come and ask me. Similar to him, I'll be floating around. But my name is Tifunsiani Mutonga. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but don't worry, you'll find me. <laughs> Amazing. And I'm Catherine Park, and I've been the community and events lead at Colour in Tech. You have been here for our Navigating My Early Career panel. Please give a round of applause to our fantastic panelists.